Hey everybody, it's Blue Toad, and welcome to The Settlers, Rise of an Empire. This is a game that I've wanted to play for a while, it's pretty cool as well. Uh, but let's create a new profile, putting in our name, selecting Lord or Lady. And then we can also do our coat of arms, if I catch up with myself. Which is always white and blue. We get to change the pattern on it, which of course I wanted to go with the, the checker pattern. So let's do that and create a new profile. We also need to make sure that we select this profile, so we actually have it selected up here. But yes, this is an interesting game that I like a lot. I'm pretty good at it as well, so. But anyway, let's go into the campaign and go into the first mission. Welcome to Vestholm, your kingdom. It is a pleasant land filled with dedicated, hard-working settlers. From your castle, you can see their daily lives and help them through the work of your knights, Lord Marcus and Lady Alandra. Your knights are your eyes and hands among your people, and with their help, you may rebuild an empire. Let's go to the mission briefing. Your Majesty, I am Lord Marcus. This is Lady Alandra. We thank you for the summons to your throne room. We look forward to serving you, Your Majesty. We wish to bring a problem to your attention. Upon hearing my report, you must choose one of us to deal with this matter. It is a simple matter that deals with bandits preying on caravans in our kingdom. You recognize this map. It is of the royal city of Vestholm, our home. We have received reports of bandits ambushing our merchant carts on the trader's route south of here. Lady Alandra and I propose one of us builds a new settlement near the trade route, here in Western Glade. A strong city near the trader's route will make the merchants more secure and keep the bandits at bay. Send me, Your Majesty, and I will give these outlaws a good measure of your justice. Okay, so at this point, we also get to select who we want to take with us, but I'm going to just take the recommended knight most of the time. So, let's have him selected with the light coming down on top of him. And we can also look at the mission briefing again, all the knight information to show what they do, because each knight will have a different ability. But for now, let's just start mission. Must build up a city. Uh, yeah, on the loading screen also tells you stuff that you need to know if you need to know, basically. Just to bring it up to speed if you want already. But anyway, let's start game. Welcome to the Settlers. I've taken the liberty of preparing for our mission. Press the highlighted button to proceed. This button. So, for the most part, we just need to use our mouse to move around. We can also move left or right or up and down. Or sideways, with with just moving to the edge of the screen with the cursor. The mini map to the right shows an overview of the area. Territory borders are shown using coloured lines. You can click on the mini map to move the camera to another position. So if we click on the map, we can also just fast travel. Basically, you can see the lots of arrows just around. Also, I'm going to just zoom out as much as possible so I can see everything. Very important. You don't want to be just down here and look at the the, uh, what's the name, like the medium blur effect on the grass, but that's just because I'm not running with the highest quality, which is, this This is the default setting, so. Zoom out using your mouse wheel. Press <gasps> the middle mouse button to move the camera. I await you at oh. the marketplace of the royal city of Vestholm, east of you. How did I not know about this? You, if you hold, hold down the middle mouse, you can just drag, which I, that's really just painful to your finger. Uh, but also you can click on this button over here wheel. to listen to what they've Press just the said mouse again. To move the camera. I await you at the marketplace of the royal city of Vestholm, east of you. We can also use our arrow keys to move around as well, but that's also pretty slow. Uh, just give me a second. Zoom out using your mouse wheel. Press the middle mouse button to move the camera. I await you at the marketplace of the royal city of Vestholm, east of you. Okay, just wanted to up the sound of the people talking. Here I am. Very good. Let's proceed. Also, by the way, this game is full of amazing quotes. <laughs> just, here I am. 
I'm just gonna start quoting everything that they say from this point on anyway. To give me orders, you have to select me first. Move the mouse on top of me and click the left mouse button. So we can do that, but we can also click his icon over here you to select him. You can give me movement orders by right-clicking where you want me to... Easy, isn't it? <laughs> so now, let us move to Lady Alandra. She is near also, Vestholm's southern gate. It's also very easy to wish. just accidentally skip text by moving on too fast for the game to handle. Uh, but anyway, something else that we should know is that if we go too far away from him, or just anywhere away from him, and if we double-click on the knight icon, it takes us right to him with the camera, which is helpful. Uh, but anyway, now let's take you where you want to go. Yes, my liege. As you command, on our way. Yes, on my our way. At once. Yes, my liege. Yeah, the, the quote. This this game is just full of quotes. Basically, this, this this game amuses me in the best possible way. Good day, Marcus. Keep an eye out on this mission. These bandits are not to be underestimated. But of course. <laughs> I was not intending for that to work out far too well. You need to establish a new settlement and make this area safe again. These bandits are out of control and have captured several traders in the past few months. Also, if we hold down con the control, we can also scroll wheel to turn the camera, which is not what you want. So press space to return the camera back to normal. There is an old castle we can use as a base. You'll find it if you move to the south along the road, then follow the trail to the west. Aye. Okay, let's go. At once. Ah, a knight. Good that his majesty has sent you. The old castle lies west of here. Just follow the trail. Okay, just follow the trail. Also, we can see where our settlement is by the the castle icon, which is not actually a castle, but it's it's just to represent the the center point of the On city, so. Aye. But of course. Also, we can deselect something by just clicking left in the middle of nowhere. As you command. Also, the music in this game is quite pleasant as well. As you command. Select your marketplace with a left mouse button click. Breaking the fourth wall. Anyway, this is the center point of the city, the marketplace. This is the marketplace. Your settlers will come here both to celebrate and to show you when they are not happy. Now, select the castle. This is our castle, where our gold is stored. The amount of gold is shown at the top of the screen next to the city's reputation. Now, select the storehouse. So this is the reputation over here, and this is the gold. We don't have to worry about gold, like, in storage being stolen, so... But here's a storehouse. This is our storehouse, where we store gathered resources. You can see them next to the gold display on top of the screen. So yes, here's all of our resources. Not that it means a whole bunch, but we also have the... the storage space here that we need to keep in mind. We have 52 out of 250 right now. So... But of course, we can also upgrade things eventually to increase space. We can't upgrade the marketplace though, except it says that we can here for some reason. That's concerning. Uh, this is the tutorial level, so... It really holds your hand for this. Uh, something else that is very, very helpful to know is if you press tab, you can also see what's inside of buildings, like the storehouse, so we'll show you all of the stuff there. It's very helpful. Uh, I think if you have, like, warriors, though, you might want to press that to, to, to toggle, because I think the... Yeah. I, I think there are some things that go on when you do that, and some things that go off when you do that, which is weird, so you might need to switch between them, depending on the moment. But for the most part, you can probably just have it to toggled on so that you can ha see what's in the storehouse. The city's reputation is shown at the top of the screen. It's very low now, but as we build up a city, it will rise. Open the city information menu at the top of the screen by clicking the highlighted button. The city information menu shows the amount of settlers, spouses and soldiers in your city. You can close this menu by clicking the button again. Also, I'd just recommend, like, double-clicking on everything he tells you to do. 
just so that you can get through the tutorial as quickly as possible. I usually do that. Open the gold menu. At the top of the screen, the gold menu shows the monthly taxes and payment of your troops. Later, you will be able to adjust these values. You can close this menu by clicking the button again. It's not also not recommended to adjust those values, but anyway. Menu at the top of the source menu at the screen. The resource menu shows all resources in your storehouse. Wood and stone, which are needed for building, are shown permanently next to the button. You can close this menu by clicking the button again. Let's start building our settlement. The construction menu is at the right side of the screen. Open the gatherer tab on that menu. Okay. Very good. First off, we'll need wood to establish a city. So select the woodcutter's hut symbol. This is very important to know. Woodcutters are basically the most important resource of the game. Kind of. The, yeah. I, I, even the harder to get stuff, I would probably say, isn't as important as wood. So let's just click this. We should put the woodcutter's hut in a good spot. Close to the trees, east of the marketplace, would be a good building place. Let's just click this, and then we can also hold down control to... Oh no. Hold down shift to rotate the building with the scroll wheel if we want to. I don't think pressing space does anything with this, so... But we can actually just, like, rotate it to where we want it, which could be convenient for... Getting the... The person inside to actually go where they want to go after they've done things. So you can see also that the trees have a green circle around them. That means that this building is going to interact with those objects, basically. <clears throat> so we want it to be close to trees where where it's green. And yeah, we also want the, the 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 arrow going in to be facing from the road, probably because the roads will make your settlers move faster on them. So new settlers come out of the storehouse. The woodcutter is on his way to create his new building now. You can watch him construct his building and start working. So we can click on a, uh, a settler to select them, obviously. Uh, but we can also press this button here to go to their house or their building that they work for. Or we can press this button to actually watch them as they go. Which is actually kind of entertaining to just do sometimes. Not that you really need to, but you can. It's just interesting to see the way that they walk around, and it's it, it's a different it's a different perspective. Settlers like the woodcutter will get hungry during working. To get some food, let's build a hunter's hut near the deer west of your marketplace. Okay, it's being a little bit faster now. We're explaining things. Don't eat raw meat. We have to construct a butcher's shop near the marketplace to produce sausages. So now we have this food icon over here, and also up there to show us how much food we have. Not that it's important at the moment, because the settlers won't consume food for the moment. Uh, but now we can construct a butcher shop, costing four wood. You can see the, the, the cost of how much wood you need to build something, uh, just above the, the explanation of what it's called. There on the side of the screen, but anyway, let's put that Very there. Good. The basic buildings are in place. The hunter will hunt deer, and deliver this resource to the storehouse. So the yellow bar when something is being built is the the progress on the building being built, I believe. There's there's a few other times when there's a yellow bar, but for the most part, the blue bar is the health of a building, which is important to keep in mind. The butcher takes an animal carcass out of the storehouse to produce sausages from it. The sausages are stored in the shelves in front of his building. Hungry settlers go to a food provider like the butcher to get food. If no food is available, they go on strike at the marketplace, and the city's reputation decreases. Excellent! As you know, new settlers will arrive when you create a building for them. This is also true when you upgrade an existing building. Select a woodcutter's hut and press the upgrade button over the building. A new settler we will come out of the storehouse, upgrade the building, and help working there. Let's follow him until the building has been upgraded. We can also just upgrade all of our buildings right now. Uh, we also probably want to put in more stuff as well, so we don't need an extra uh, hunter's hut though. We only have one place to hunt stuff, so we should probably not build too close to it. We can actually scare these animals too far away that they just 
go off the map, basically, so we need to be very careful. I'm gonna build another woodcutter's hut as well. I think it costs more, depending on the type of building, to upgrade it, so... And I think it gets more expensive as, it, as we go. I might be wrong about that, though. But yeah, we need to be careful on how much wood we spend. And also how many settlers we have, because the amount of food that we have Gathering buildings is going to be a problem. Gathering transport their resources faster with a handcart now. In producing buildings, like the butcher's shop, having more people increases the building's effectiveness. So yes, now that this butcher's shop is upgraded, there are now two people working there that are uh, making food. I mean, that's the same with the woodcutter's hut and all that, because now there are two woodcutters, but only one of them has to deliver the wood to the storehouse, which now that there's, it's been upgraded, they'll now move faster with a cart, which again will be fast, even faster if we upgrade it a third time, which uh, I probably should do that. We've now set up the basics for our settlement, but before we proceed, we have to produce enough food. Open the food menu. The food menu shows the amount of food resources in your storehouse and the amount of food goods in your city buildings. Use it to check if you gather enough resources and produce enough food goods. You can close this menu by clicking the build more hunters huts and butchers shops and produce sausage. Our settlers gather wood and produce food. The basics are set. Now we're ready to protect our settlement from the bandits. To do this, the next step is to promote me to Sheriff. Open the Night Promotion menu. The Night Promotion menu shows the preconditions needed to promote me to a higher title. You can close this menu by clicking the button again. So, this shows the next title up here, which is Sheriff. This is important to know. Also, the icon down here will also have more star things in the middle to show you what level you are at. Uh, but the next need is, uh, actually no, so I was, I was lying before when I said that the food wasn't necessary because settlers wouldn't eat it. So if we click on a building we can see how much food they have left in that building until they need to go get more food basically. Which at the moment this building is yellow, so they'll get food soon enough probably. Uh, but if we don't have enough food we'll be in trouble, so I probably should upgrade that building there to get more, uh, deer hunted. Ah, uh, but yes. As you know, this as reaching the rank of sheriff is an important step to making this region safe. Marcus, I am sending you some stone. You will need it to upgrade your castle. I bear grim tidings, Marcus. Bandits are blocking the shipment of stone. It's up to you. Claim land and gather the stone. Heavens watch over you. To gather stone, we need a stone quarry. There is a stone quarry in the territory of Vestwood Curve. Please send me there, my liege. So stuff Bandits like stone and gain. Also, that's the thing that's going to happen a lot whenever something's taken by an enemy. Uh... So, so, like, natural resources, except for, like, wood, basically. Uh, you can see them on the map with icons, so let's go up this Hi. way. To this unclaimed territory. Unclaimed territories will be f covered in fog, and also not shown on the map. Uh, but same with, the uh, enemy territories, I guess, will be also fogged. But friend territories will be viewable to us, so, to like, over here. To the stone quarry, we must claim this territory. Please select the outpost button and place an outpost on this territory to claim it. So with our knight inside of the territory we want to claim, as long as nobody's claimed it already, we can now press this button, which means we have to spend gold and wood to build an outpost here. And then we have this territory. A construction worker will come from the storehouse and construct the outpost. The territory will be ours when the outpost has been created. As you Need wish. to have knight at our town center for the moment though. We can also demolish buildings with this thing here, down. though. Select the building, wall, or trail you want to be removed. The settlers will do the job for you. We can also unclick it by clicking it again, so that's something pretty helpful to know. But to get to the next uh, title, we also need to have an upgraded castle. Uh, ten s settlers, which we have eleven, so we're good. Uh, but we also need clothes, so we're going to have to do something about that when the game lets us. 
it's currently holding our hand, so we have, we have to wait a little bit. We can also speed things up now with this button down here, setting it to two times speed or three times speed, or just back to one time speed. It just goes in a loop, so we it's just helpful the territory. to speed things up. You gonna the say something? Has been built, and the territory is ours. Now we can build two stone cutters huts near the stone quarry to gather stone. This is usually not what you want to do, depending on the level. Uh, but for now, we'll just do what he says and build two stone cutters huts. We can rotate buildings before placing them. We should build a trail to connect the stone cutters hut to the marketplace. Select the trail button, then click to select the start and destination of the trail to be built. So we can now go into this tab over here and open up trail, which allows us to build a road, which if we have a building, like before we, this is probably what we want to do before we place a building, but because it's the tutorial, it's rude to us. Because whenever we have, like when we're going to build a building, it will now connect to that road immediately, and it's going to be way more effective and actually make sure that the game actually knows that that's, that road is there, so the settlers will use it properly. Because as you can see, if they don't, they'll just go off the edge of it for some reason. So yeah, we want that before we build buildings. Outposts is posts can also be upgraded once to make them stronger so that it can't be destroyed. Excellent. The stonecutters huts have been built up and the stonecutters will start to gather stone. Now that you have more settlers, you will also need more food. Yes. Because of the bandits, I cannot send the clothes that your settlers will need. Young Marcus, please give the order to build two tanneries to enable the settlers to produce leather clothes themselves. Young Marcus? It's fine. Anyway, we now have a clothing tab, which means we can build a tannery, which converts uh, gain into clothes. So let's build a few of those. We probably want to build them close to the uh, storehouse so they can get materials quickly. And so that settlers that need them will get them faster as well. So have, have resources that are like food and clothing close to the center of your town, whereas resource gathering can be a lot further away. It doesn't make sense to have, like, important stuff way out on the edges of the map, so. Very good. Don't forget that we need more food for our new settlers, Marcus. Once we have produced the clothes, we can see about making you Sheriff of Vestholm. Okay, you can see this guy with a cart here. Bringing in wood. That's because his building is level 2. At level 3, they actually have a horse and cart, basically. Also, these tax collectors that will spawn in from the castle sometimes, they go to important buildings like, um, put, like food and clothing shops. You can rotate shops. the camera to look around. Please try it. Now I'm good. And then switch back to the default camera angle. And they grab, they basically tax money from selling food or clothing. So, that's, that's important to keep in mind. Also, because we press tab, to show what's in the storehouse. It also shows what's inside of regular buildings and also more important buildings like, well, I guess, <laughs> I say more important buildings. The, 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 I don't know. The, I don't know what, the ma market buildings, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know what, how to describe them. But anyway, we need to get six clothes so we can get to the next title. Uh, but we just need a little bit more stone so we can upgrade the castle as well to also get to the next level. Also, at the next level, we will actually need clothes, but at the moment, the settlers won't actually consume clothes, which we can see we over here is stone. faded out. Select the castle and upgrade it. When you give the order, the settlers will come and do the job. This is actually really cool when you upgrade a main building. I'm also just going to wait a little bit longer so that the, the clothes won't interrupt me. Well done, Marcus. The settlers do not need clothes yet, but they will want them when you become Sheriff of Vestholm. I knew it. <laughs> anyway, we can also just click on something that we already have, well, that has already spoken, and then click it, unclick it, so just hide that in the corner so we don't have that to worry about. Uh, we can also click on this globe icon over here to see what the terrain is like around the world, so we can see where, where trees are, 
where rivers are, where grass is, basically. Uh, grass is important to know where grass is because there are some places like this over here where it's all rocky and we can't actually build certain buildings on it, so. Uh, but anyway, let me also click that again to return to territories and all that. Uh, we can also click on this building over here. This is the production menu, which means that we can click on something like uh, the tanneries. And then we can also click red to stop all production of this item. We'll unclick that. Or we can click yellow, which means that it will still be produced, but it means that the settlers won't take any of it. So we can actually do that to food and then it will still make food, but the settlers will go hungry basically, which is probably not the greatest idea right now. We can also, we can also check on different buildings from here. So if we double, if we click on a tannery, it will take us to a tannery, but if we click it again, it will take us to the other tannery because we can actually see how many of that building we have here. Uh, same with every other type of building, basically. Just go through all of them, if I want to. But we can also go to the main buildings quickly this way. Not that I ever do that, but anyway. <laughs> we can't stop production on the main buildings, which are the castle uh, and the storehouse. So. Um, okay. Let me, let me build the castle now. That it's also winter, which also means I should probably look look at this tab over here, which shows the the calendar, which shows us uh, what parts of the year uh, winter basically with the I winter icon. It also means that we can't produce those particular resources in those months. So, but we don't even need these resources right now. Can also show the the, the how far into the month we are at the top of here. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much everything for that. We can also click on this diplomacy tab here, which means we can check out everyone who's in the map. So there's us here, which doesn't really matter. We can also click this icon here to see where this is. This magnifying glass will show us where it is. Uh, but we've also got the green over here, which is our ally, Alandra, in our main base, I guess, which is not really our main base. But anyway, we can go to there if we wanted to, but we don't need to. This will also show the status of different characters. So allied is good for us right now. It also shows us what uh, a character will offer, which is trading, which there's nothing to trade at the moment, so we'll worry about that later. Anyway, now that all that is out of the way, let's upgrade the castle, which is actually really cool because just settlers from all around will actually help build it. I'm also going to speed this up for this. I usually speed up the game for most of the time, but look at this. Just look at this. All of the regular workers come together, grab resources from the storehouse, and then go to the castle, working together, and then build together. That's just really cool to me. If I may, I will note that I am due recognition for my services to you. The so castle looks just yeah. Nice. Where books just doing well. The game is unhappy with me right now. Ah, uh, but anyway. If a knight has the pr ability to be promoted, there'll be green around the uh, pr promotion menu. And now there's a, a a title thing here that we need to do. The knight has to be at the town center to be able to, or the marketplace may, to be able to do this. I will note that I and if they don't get promoted when do. they can get promoted, they will complain. <laughs> so let's do that. I am humbled by your magnanimity, my liege. Sure. Congratulations on the new title, Marcus Sheriff of Vestholm. Some royal troops have returned from patrol, and I will send them to you. Bandits are attacking our settlement. Click on the cross swords to and select all of your army. Misguided. They have no chance of success against our forces. We've got archers and soldiers, so this should go by quickly. If we are nearby an enemy, our soldiers will just fight them if they're close enough, so. But there we go. The bandit camps have been destroyed. Now they can no longer harm the settlers or raid the traders. My congratulations, your majesty. We solved this challenge calmly and effectively. Of course, you had some help. Hmm. <laughs> but the question is, 
Why did these carts come all the way from Chalia without guards? What is going on over there? I guess we'll have to find out. Let's exit to statistics. Not, not that the statistics... Ah, statistics really matter. I've never looked at them. But anyway. <laughs> they don't really mean much. All you need to know is that you win. Uh, the, the stuff on the side of the left side of the screen usually shows the missions that you have to do to complete a level. Uh, but one of them will have a, like, a bar underline it, and I'm gonna probably point it out next time. But that is a victory condition, which means that if you complete it, it means that the level will end. So. But anyway, that is it for now, so thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.